This video is a brief introduction to the web UI for the EMU release of ONOS. It covers basic functionality and navigation. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I have a browser window here. Up here, I have a window for running ONOS. We're going to run it in standalone mode or single instance mode. And then down here, I have a window to log into a virtual machine running Mininet. And we're going to run a simple tower topology of six switches. So I'm going to start up the UI. Now we have a, a little script called Honest GUI, which we can use. Alternatively, you could just type in this URL here substituting in the IP address of one of the cluster instances if you are actually wanting to connect to an ONOS cluster. You are presented with a login screen and so of course you need to put in username and password. For out of the box in single mode it will be carafe and carafe as username and password. Logging in you're presented with the default view and that is currently the topology view which is a graphical representation of your topology in, uh, as discovered by ONOS. So we're going to come back to the details of this view in a little bit. But what I want to show you first is the navigation, which is very simple. We have a drop-down menu, which is activated with the, the menu button here. The different views in ONOS are roughly categorized into views about the ONOS platform up at the top here and then views relating to the network itself. And so we're currently looking at the topology view. You'll see over here on the right that there is a link for logging out. So let's take a look at some of these views in a bit more detail. Since we're here, let's look at the topology view. And you'll notice some of the features here are a panel in the top left-hand corner showing the instances in the cluster and a panel on the right showing summary information about the network. We also have down in this bottom corner a toolbar which can be pulled out with buttons for the various features of this specific view. So for example we can toggle panels um, on and off to the, sc the screen. Um, but you'll also notice if we hover over these that they have in parentheses at the end, the a key that can be used to also activate that item. So here we are uh, using the L key to cycle between showing labels or not for the devices. A useful keystroke to know is the slash or backslash key, and this brings up quick help in each view. So you'll notice that there are a lot of different functions that you can do with the topology view. And we'll cover some of these in a little more detail later. Looking at the devices view, we can see the devices in table form. And from this view, we can select a device and see more information about it. One trick that you might wish to know about is clicking on the title here allows us to rename that device. We can give it a friendly name. So for example, we can call this one Core 1, this one Core 2, and give the others labels, labels also. Switch 11. And the reason we would want to do this is so that the topology view has a slightly more useful labeling. So now we can go back to the topology view. And from here, pressing the L key will show our friendly labels. Pressing L again will show the actual IDs of the switches and once more and we lose the labels. Now, you'll see that we have no hosts in our topology. So to do something about that, we can get Mininet to ping all the hosts. And as you can see, 
the first two hosts have found each other and um, Onos has added them to its model of the topology but it seems to be having trouble with the pings and I suspect that the reason for that is that our reactive forwarding application is not active. So we can fix this from the UI by going to the applications view and a quick glance down here you can see the active applications with the check marks there is no forwarding application. So from here we can scroll down and find the Honest Project forwarding reactive forwarding application. On selecting an item as you see there is a detail panel with information about that application and possibly any dependencies that it has on other applications. There's also an opportunity for application developers to give a URL to documentation about their app if they want to. So from here we can click on this button to activate the forwarding and with a confirmation dialog we can now activate that and you can see that it's activated here and now the pings are going through as you would expect. So let's take another look at the topology view and here we are with the switches and all the hosts. So some things that you can do are to hold down the command key on the Mac and then click and drag to change the zoom level or to, uh, to pan the view. So we can have it fit a little cl cleaner in our view. Selecting a device will show information about that device and the navigation buttons here will show information or will navigate to a different view but in the context of the selected device. So you'll see we have our switch 14 here. We can click on this device view button and it navigates to the device table with switch 14 selected. From here also we can use these other buttons for navigation to look at the flows that are shown on that device, the ports for that device, the groups for that device. In this specific case OpenFlow 1.0 switches do not support groups and also meters for the device. Again not supported in this case. Going back to the topology view, um, another thing that we can do is we can actually drag the nodes on the display. When you finish dragging, they are pinned in place. So now if, um, if we navigate away from this view and then come back, those nodes will be in exactly that spot. Again, we can use the L key to show our friendly devices, uh, friendly names here for the devices. Um, and we can see information about hosts as well as nodes. Also links, information about the links. And if you click on something other than an actual item, then the selection is deselected. So let's take a look at this here. You'll no also notice that there are a couple more buttons here, show device flows and show related traffic. These buttons are actually part of the traffic overlay, which is a mechanism that we have in place to allow other applications to add functionality to the topology view. So if we look at the toolbar down here, you'll see that we have three rows of buttons. The first and second rows are always present. And then the third row here are buttons that are functionality that is injected by a specific topology overlay. In this case, we have the traffic overlay, which by default is activated. But we can switch that behavior off by selecting no overlay. And uh, you'll see that those buttons disappear from that bottom row. Now, the reason we do this is to allow other applications to add their own overlay functionality so that they can highlight things in the topology or show information in the, about the topology that, that they're specifically interested in. So with the, the traffic overlay there are a number of things that we can do and we'll, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So let's just look at the other tables 
um, tunnels, not very interesting in this demonstration. I don't have any created. Uh, for the intents, we don't have any here yet, but we can actually inject some test intents using the Ono CLI. So we can push random intents, and we'll just push, say, 20 of them. And there they are, installed. And so we've created some random host-to-host -host intents here. Um, as you can see, we are able to select items in this table. And when we select them, this button up here becomes available, Show Selected Intent on Topology View. So we can click on that button, and it will take us to the Topology View, and then it will highlight the route that the data is taking between those two hosts. And this is part of the traffic behavior. So other things that we can do with, with the traffic, for example, is we can show all traffic using flow stats. And so we, if we create some traffic, let's do ping all. We're now generating traffic on the network, and we should be seeing. There we go. You can see the, uh, the data on the, the links showing up briefly as those pings go across the network. Another feature to note is the port highlighting. Um, when it's enabled, which you can do either with the button here or, or by pressing the P key, by hovering over links, you can see the ports at either end of the link. In this case, we have four and one, five and one, and so on. If this behavior becomes too annoying, pressing the P key to disable it is a good idea. So some other things that you can do with traffic. Let's take a look at the uh, port stats. Monitoring with port stats, we can perhaps inject some uh, big packet data. Let's see, um, H11, ping minus size 20,000 to H45. And we should see some data appearing on the path between the two. There it goes, and you can see the amount of data moving on those links. Um, and that's using uh, port statistics information from the switches involved. We can cancel that. Another thing that you can do with uh, traffic overlay is to look at the device flows. And to do that, you press this button here and then select the device you're interested in. So for example, we can look at core one. We can also um, shift click to do a multi-selection if that's uh, useful for you. Um, and also notice that mouse hover is also active, which kind of does a, a temporary add for the device information. So that's showing um, device flows. There are actually um, two highlighting colors here. You can see the green and the um, orange. So the orange is what we're calling primary highlighting, and the green is secondary highlighting. And that just means that um, it's a slightly different way of showing uh, two levels of selection. This is particularly useful when we look at, for example, the related intents view. With this button pressed, we can show all of the intents that pass through the selected switch or switches. So in this case, you'll see um, these all of the uh, links highlighted that have intents through them. And then with these two buttons here, we can show the next or previous specific intent. So this also has a keyboard shortcut using the, the left arrow, 
Oh, of course, I've just deselected. Reselect. Show related intents. And now if I do right arrow, it'll step through the intents that pass through that switch. And as you can see, the the links that are involved with all of the intents that pass through that switch are highlighted in the secondary color, the green. And then if we find one that we particularly are interested in, we can then do this last button or press the W key, which is to monitor the traffic for that intent. So pressing W, there you go. So that was a brief tour of what the traffic overlay does for you in the topology view. Notice again the shortcuts on the detail panel down here. You can show device flows and show related traffic. And that's just exactly the same functionality as we've just seen. Here I'm going through the intents and looking at a specific one. Now we're going to switch to a slightly different setup so that I can show you some of the other features of the topology view. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like when we connect to a cluster of ONOS instances. In this case we have a three node cluster and 25 switches which have been arranged on a background map of the US. The way this is done is we encode the longitude and latitude and also the friendly labels of each device in a configuration which is injected into the ONOS cluster and distributed. And so we take the longitude and latitude values and project those onto the background map of the states. As a side note, the background map can be toggled on and off using the B key. And also a thing to note is that this icon here indicates which instance the UI is currently connected to. Also, we have multiple links between the same devices. Three here, two here. So let's see what happens if the ONOS instance that our UI is connected to goes down. So over in a window that you cannot see, I am going to issue the shutdown command and confirm that. And notice that the UI has moved over to here and the first instance has gone down. Also note the color coding showing that the devices have been picked up by the other two nodes in the cluster. Now we have an auto restart which is why you've just seen the first instance come back online again. But notice that there's no automatic rebalance of nodes. We can do this manually using the equalize mastership roles command. And then that kicks in the rebalance algorithm. So now you can see that the switches have been fairly evenly distributed across the three instances again. And that concludes our brief tour of the web UI. Do go and check the wiki online to get more information about the different views and the additional applications that can be installed and so on. Thanks for listening.